Thank you very much, and that concludes the urgent question. We'll turn now to the next item of business, which is a statement by Shirley Ann Somerville on the implementation of Best Start Grant. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement. I would encourage all members who wish to ask a question of the Cabinet Secretary to press their request to speak buttons as soon as possible. And I call on Shirley Ann Somerville. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Today I would like to provide Parliament with an update on the introduction of the Carers Allowance Supplement and progress with the next phase of delivery for Social Security in Scotland. I'm delighted to say that the vast majority of Carers Allowance Supplement payments were issued during September 2018 and all payments to carers, including those few which required special handling, were processed by mid-October. I'm also pleased to announce today that subject to the successful and timely transfer of data from the DWP, the next payment of Carers Allowance Supplement will be made to the majority of qualifying carers on 14th December. Members of the Social Security Committee who visited Social Security Scotland's headquarters in Dundee saw the feedback wall with comments from those who had called in during September. I'm sure they will have been as touched as I was by some of those comments. And I want to take this opportunity to tell Parliament about one woman who took the time to send in a card on receipt of her payment. She had given up her job to care for her daughter because her daughter was suffering from a long-term illness. As she says, she does this because she loves her daughter, but she also gets tired sometimes and that the payment had made her feel appreciated. We should all be proud of that. And I know I speak on behalf of the Chamber when I say that we all value and welcome what carers do for society. But, Presiding Officer, today is International Children's Day, so I am particularly delighted to be able to tell you more about our progress to deliver the Best Start Grant, which will support low-income families in the early years on such an appropriate day. <clears throat> I gave evidence on the Best Start Grant regulations at the Social Security Committee at the start of October, and I am pleased that the Committee and now Parliament have approved the regulations. They put in place a benefit which is fully in keeping with social security principles. It's an investment in the resilience of families, providing support at key points in their children's early years. It also respects the rights of the applicant and the rights of the child, ensuring the right to social security. BSG is deliberately designed to be accessible both in terms of eligibility and the service that will support it. And we have improved access for BSG, giving families longer to apply both before and after their baby is born. In addition, BSG will foster dignity and respect, minimising intrusive questioning where possible by making the most of existing sources of information. Finally, BSG will have been built on modelling, research and collaboration with stakeholders, engagement with users to provide a sound evidence base for our decisions. This morning, I signed the commencement regulations for the relevant sections of the Social Security Scotland Act 2018, which gives Scottish ministers the powers to pay a form of early years assistance under the Act. So today, I'm proud to announce that we will use our new powers to take applications for the Best Start Pregnancy and Baby Grant from the 10th of December. I'm delighted to say that this means that payments will be made before Christmas 2018. The Best Start Grant will pay a £600 pregnancy and baby payment for the first child in a low-income family. That's £100 more than they would have got from the DWP Sure Start Maternity Grant that BSG replaces. Importantly, unlike the UK government, this government do not put a cap on children and payments will no longer be limited to the first child in the family. All se second and subsequent children will also receive a payment of £300 each. Let me be clear, this is not just for second children born in the future. Our increase in window for applying means that from the 10th of December, parents with a sub second or subsequent child who is not yet six months old can apply for the Best Start Grant. Under the Scottish Government, these children will be eligible to receive up to £800 in the early years. They would, of course, have received nothing from the UK Government. And of course, in addition to the pregnancy and baby payments of £600, we are also committed to the introduction of two new additional payments for every child. These payments will be introduced by summer 2019 
and made at key transition points in a young child's life. £250 at around the time that a child can start nursery to support families with the costs of early learning and £250 around the time a child can start school. Based on 2019-20 figures, when the early learning and school payments are added, we estimate that the total number of payments annually will be in the region of 39,000 at a cost of 12.1 million. That's a substantial investment to ensure that our under fives get the best possible start in life and reflects this government's emphasis on the early years. As outlined in our programme for government, I'm delighted to be able to deliver the baby and pregnancy payments for BSG six months early, which of course means paying families on lower incomes more money more quickly. Vital help at a time when they are seeking support through UK government social security spending drastically reducing. Presiding officer, while we are in the final stages of preparation and testing for the launch, this has not been without its challenges. As part of programme for government, the First Minister announced that, assuming DWP get the necessary systems in place, we would be accelerating delivery of the Best Start grant. Whilst I am pleased to have been able to confirm today that we will do that, the caveat about DWP activity proved to be well-founded, and unfortunately the DWP had not kept to schedule on its implementation plans. <clears throat> in the summer of 2017, the Scottish Government formally requested use of the DWP's customer information system and a plan and schedule for doing this was agreed in spring 2018. However, the dates for accessing the system have consistently slipped and on the 21st of September, the DWP confirmed that they could no longer meet the most recently agreed dates. This has involved adjustments to our social security system to, in effect, unpick the computer code which had been put in place to speak to the DWP system. Despite the challenges arising from the DWP missing deadlines, Scottish Government officials have worked hard to put an alternative system in place. Due to our planning processes, the implications of the delay to accessing the DWP's customer information system were recognised at an early stage. As a result of this, the impacts have been minimised. Under our contingency arrangements, it will take slightly longer to process applications, but this will not have any impact on parents or the delivery of payments. Our priority is to ensure that parents can access the Best Start grant, and whilst we could wait for the DWP to catch up, I did not want parents to be affected by the DWP delay. Presiding officer, clearly DWP has its own challenges to grapple with right now. I have written to the new Work and Pensions Secretary Amber Rudd to welcome her to her new role, and I have also taken the opportunity to reiterate the Scottish Government's call to halt the rollout of Universal Credit, our eighth such letter in 18 months. I'm committed to collaborating with the Secretary of State, however, to ensure we develop the best possible systems and processes for our shared clients. And my officials have strong and effective relationships in place with their DWP counterparts. Where there can be a mismatch, however, is in the way we prioritise this vital work on the devolution of social security benefits. I have and will continue to, to strongly urge that the devolution of benefits is given a higher priority within the DWP to ensure such slippages are avoided and that we do not have a pattern developing. Presiding officer, I'm pleased to report the significant progress in building a new social security system for Scotland. As I have said, it's not without its challenges, but today marks another important milestone in the smooth transfer of benefits. But our future success is only guaranteed if others also play their full part, primarily the DWP. If they do, our programme will remain on track. I want to conclude by reassuring this chamber that we will never compromise on safety or security. Social Security Scotland is Scotland's first new public service in a generation. It has only been established for two and a half months, but we are already demonstrating that we can, what we can do with our social security powers when they are in our hands. Delivering a social security system which always treats people with the dignity and respect they deserve and ensuring we support those on the lowest incomes. And I look forward to reporting further progress in 2019. Thank you. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions. Michelle Ballantyne to be followed by Mark Griffin. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement? I'm sure this chamber and mothers across Scotland will welcome the rollout before Christmas of this, the second of the devolved benefits that are coming to Social Security Scotland. 
And indeed, on the Social Security Committee's excellent visit to the Dundee HQ, we did indeed hear positive feedback from recipients of carers allowance supplement. However, there was also some surprise from some recipients who were unaware that this new entitlement was coming. So can I therefore ask the Cabinet Secretary, what actions will the Scottish Government be taking to publicise the Best Start grant and ensure that new mothers do not miss out on this grant because they are unaware of its existence? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, I, th I think this um, raises a, a very important um, point about um, encouraging take-up. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be frank, I would have liked to have been able to make this announcement to the Parliament earlier. But because of the challenges we've had around uh, the contingency matters within Social Security Scotland, we needed to make sure within the agency and within government um, that we were um, very confident about our start date. So this is the earliest that um, it was possible to make the announcement because we have had to work um, um, a lot to ensure that the contingencies um, were in place. Um, that therefore does leave us with um, a, a very important priority to ensure that people know what's happening. Uh, there have been a number of roadshows that have, have gone um, across the country that the agency have held uh, to deal with um, those people who will be coming into contact uh, with um, potentially eligible uh, parents. Uh, we will also be ensuring that, as we did with the Carers Allowance Supplement, uh, that there will be um, advertisements on local radio and in uh, local papers um, and there has been a great deal of work dealing with uh, professional bodies including midwifery um, and um, nursing professions, local authorities to ensure that the message has got out to stakeholders, to those that will be in contact with uh, potentially eligible parents and also to ensure that we're trying to contact the eligible parents themselves um, and we will make sure that that communications and marketing process it goes on strongly and learn any lessons that we need to from that to encourage further take up um, as uh, the payments continue. Mark Griffin to be followed by Fulton McGregor. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the early sight of our statement and I'm particularly grateful for the Government's willingness to use its powers to diverge from the two child cap in Scotland and to provide support for families who've had a baby in these past six months. Um, my daughter Eva turned three on Sunday and because of an in-service day yesterday started nursery this afternoon. Now, she needed new trainers, she needed new wellies, she needed a bag, she needed hat, scarf, gloves, and she needed a change of clothes, um, just as part of the list of things she needed for starting nursery today. And those are things that uh, we could afford. But for some of my daughter's new friends at nursery, uh, families who face universal credit in North Lanarkshire, they could really do with that £250 payment just now. So will the Cabinet Secretary consider making payments to children turning three and start a nursery over the next six months to take pressure off struggling families on low incomes. Um, given that it's different to the uh, school start term date at the end of the summer where um, children will be turning three gradually over the next six months and families will be um, under real pressure. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, can I uh, begin by wishing Eva a very happy birthday um, and um, sympathise with Mark Griffin that he's here listening to me rather than being there for the first day at nursery. You were there already. That's, that's very impressive um, then for your timekeeping um, as well. But he raises a, a very um, important point about the, the, um, the money that's required. And I'm, I'm very um, reminded by um, a parent who I spoke to when I was... Um, at one parent families Scotland who were taking part in the stakeholder engagement around the Best Start grant um, when they were telling me about um, a mother who couldn't afford to send their child to nursery because they couldn't unfold, um, afford the plimsolls that they needed to be able to take part um, in that indoor play. So I'm, I'm very mindful of that and the importance of um, making sure that we deliver the early learning payments um, and the school payments um, as quickly as possibly. Um, I, I will make um, further announcements to Parliament um, as, as soon as again I am confident in when um, we can do that but we do expect um, to do that um, by the summer next year. And I'm also very mindful of course of the, the different um, time frames that are involved in both early learning um, and school and I look very seriously at that as with all these um, um, issues as we move forward with the, the, the second and third um, payments as part of the Best Start grant. 
Fulton McGregor to be followed by Alison Harris. Thank you, President Officer. How many families does the Cabinet Secretary anticipate will benefit by ensuring there is no cap on children and so second and subsequent children will be eligible for this more generous grant than the decronian UK Government scheme it replaces? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I'm pleased to say that out of our estimated total of 3,400 BSG pregnancy and payment baby payments that are forecast to be made by the end of this financial year, around 2,000 are estimated to be for second or subsequent births. For the whole of the next financial year, 2019-20, we expect the number of second or subsequent births to benefit uh, to be around 7,400. This is substantially um, this is a substantial number of families that will get much needed financial support from the Scottish Government that's not available under the current DWP scheme and would not have been available had it not been for the devolution of powers. Alison Harris to be followed by Polly McNeill. Yeah, thank you. Could I just ask the Minister to please clarify, as Mark Griffin already asked, but if those children are, that are due to start nursery or school in 2019 Will they be eligible for or entitled to apply for these early year grants or are you looking at something that perhaps might be backdated for them? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I can assure the member, as I tried to do with Mark Griffin, that I'm very mindful of the, the different timetables that are available. Obviously, Parliament and the committees um, will have an ability to um, look at what um, the government is, is planning around um, our, our payments for this. And if there are concerns um, around these aspects, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy um, and, and always would encourage members to have that, that dialogue with me. Uh, we are keen to make sure that eligibility um, is as open and encouraging um, as possible. And if there are lessons to, to learn, as I've said um, previously, um, and uh, issues that we need to take on board, then again, I'm happy um, to look at that. Pauline McNeill to be followed by George Adam. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I would like to put on record I welcome the Scottish Government's commitment that there will not be a two-child cap on this benefit. Former Cabinet Secretary Jean Freeman supported the automation of certain benefits where there is a qualifying benefit that can establish who is eligible for a Best Start grant. Uh, will the Cabinet Secretary give the same commitment to look at the provisions that we have already passed in the Social Security Act and also in the Child Poverty Act, which promotes automated benefits to ensure that all those mothers and parents who are entitled to the Best Start Grant can, can get it? Cabinet Secretary. Well, this is an area which I, I know Pauline McNeill and indeed a, a number of members have had um, a, a long running um, interest in. And it's one I'm, I'm very determined uh, to ensure that the Scottish Government looks at uh, very seriously. Our first um, uh, priority has to be the, the implementation of the Best Start grant and ensuring that the payments and the processes um, are in place. Um, and it, I'm also mindful of not simply just looking at automation, but also looking at ways where we can um, encourage people um, to apply if we believe that they may be eligible um, for um, a, a payment. Uh, so both in terms of ensuring that we're looking very seriously at um, automation, and I know there are uh, a number of uh, different schemes which are in different parts of the country, Glasgow, for example, I know being one of them, um, which are available for us to learn lessons from, but also ensuring that we're using the information that we have as an agency to encourage people to apply for payments where we believe that they may be eligible. So those two different strands um, are aspects which I'm, I'm very keen that the Scottish Government takes it forward um, as uh, stringently as possible. George Adam to be followed by Patrick Harvey. Thank you, President Officer. I listened to the Cabinet Secretary's statement with interest and I was shocked to hear of the delays and slippages from the DWP impacting on the work plans and delivery of devolved benefits. With a new Secretary of State for Work and Pensions now in post, does the Cabinet Secretary expect any change in the UK Government managing to keep to their actual agreed timetables? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I hope that the, the new Secretary of State um, does take the opportunity to ensure 
that we can have a shared understanding about the priorities uh, for devolved benefits within the wider work that goes on uh, within the DWP. As the member highlights, this delay um, with BSG hasn't been uh, a, a one-off. Um, I should um, also put on record, however, that my officials have a very strong relationship um, and strong working relationship uh, with officials within the, the DWP. I'd stress again, this is about the prioritisation within the, WP, the DWP and ensuring that we have a shared understanding of the importance and the fact that this is a, a shared um, project and a shared responsibility to ensure that we deliver it on time and effectively. Patrick Harvey to be followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm grateful for the advanced copy of the statement, and I'm pleased that the Scottish Government is placing some emphasis on the, uh, the goal of increasing uptake and setting some, some targets on that. Uh, but even if we reach those, those higher targets for uptake, there'll still be a, a great many families who could be benefiting the, from this who won't be. So I'm, I'm keen to know what research the Government relies upon to understand the reasons uh, for low uptake. Uh, awareness is obviously a critical one, but it's probably not the only factor that inhibits people from accessing the benefits to which they're entitled. Uh, and can the minister tell us what role uh, income maximisation programmes such as Healthier, Wealthier Children may have in helping to drive uptake even higher than the government's targets? Cabinet Secretary. Well, it is very important that we do encourage uh, uptake. And I'm also very mindful that we uh, have to do um, a particular um, amount of work with uh, particular groups that wouldn't perhaps be um, um, encouraged normally to uh, apply for payments or may indeed not know that these uh, payments are, uh, exist. So it's, um, I, I would um, hopefully give Patrick Harvey the reassurance uh, that we're not just looking at take up in the round, but we're also looking at the specific challenges that certain communities um, will face in ensuring that they know what's available to them. He mentioned, for example, um, the um, healthy, wealthier children, uh, which is an important aspect because it's, it's trying to embed knowledge of the Best Start grant into pathways that already um, exist, and that is indeed one of them. Also mindful, for example, of the work that is being done uh, within financial health checks um, for those on uh, low incomes um, and building in um, information on the Best Start grant to Ready Steady Baby for example, which is another way to, to, to move that forward. But the forecasting that goes on um, within government does look very seriously um, at, um, uh, at this issue and different types of challenges that different communities will face. And we will, of course, um, update Parliament on our continued work around uh, the take-up strategy in due course. Alex Cole Hamilton to be followed <coughs> by Bob Jones. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of her statement and associate these benches with what her government is doing here. Particularly welcome the provision being made for young parents, whereby parents under the age of 18 won't need a qualifying benefit to apply for a Best Start grant. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what consideration she would give to extending that provision to people of care experience up to the age of 25, given that such young people often don't have the support of parents to lean on as most other new families do. Cabinet Secretary. Right, well, Alec Cole Hamilton um, will be very aware of the importance that this government um, has on ensuring that we are delivering um, for uh, care experienced uh, young people. Um, the information that we have analysed um, as part of the Best Start grant um, regulation process um, um, will ensure that um, I'm confident that the vast, vast, vast majority of those who are um, uh, care experienced young people will be included within the eligibility framework that, that we um, already have in place um, through the, the regulations. Uh, there is, um, I would tie in um, this point to the point that Patrick Harvey made. It's therefore important though, that we link in to the agencies who um, care experienced young people trust to ensure that they have the information about Best Start Grant so that they can get that information out directly. And taking that two-pronged approach, I'm confident that we are delivering um, for young parents and for those with care experienced in particular. <laughs> Bob Doris to be followed by Annie Wales. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, I welcome the government commitment to extend the eligibility in various ways to the Best Start grant. The additional payments that will be made, as well as the length of time that will now be given to apply for this grant. 
Can I ask you how many more children that the Cabinet Secretary estimates will benefit from the Best Start Grant compared to the UK system of benefits that it replaces? And can you provide any additional information regarding those welcome extensions? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the member is indeed correct to uh, point to the fact that the government has extended um, eligibility and indeed the application window. The focus of this being to ensure that we're making it easier for people to access and indeed apply for the Best Start grant. And we estimate this will mean around 400 additional pregnancy and baby payments could be made in 2019-20. In terms of eligibility, for example, we've extended the qualifying benefits so that anyone on a tax credit <coughs> or housing benefit can qualify. We've removed the requirement for a qualifying benefit for young mothers under 18, as Alex Cole Hamilton has just alluded to, and our extended um, our responsibility test to kinship carers who have a DWP benefit for the child they care for. The application window is extended so that BSG can be claimed from the 24th week of pregnancy as opposed to DWP's 29 weeks and increased to six months after birth, giving parents longer to apply. Annie Wells to be followed by Jenny Gilruth. Thank you. I too welcome the announcements made in today's statement. And can I ask, will the Cabinet Secretary consider using the Best Start grant application process as an opportunity to reach out to expectant and new mothers and provide information on wider issues such as perinatal mental health? Cabinet Secretary. <coughs> Well, as I mentioned in uh, my uh, previous answers, we will be ensuring that we're embedding the best start grant uh, process into the pathways that are already there um, for um, expectant parents um, and that we are ensuring that we are uh, speaking to and encouraging midwives, for example, and um, those that are in contact with potentially eligible parents to encourage take up of this. I would add at this point, of course, we are also integrating the systems for delivering Best Start grants with Best Start Foods, um, and they will both be administered for Social Security Scotland, so that therefore clients will only be required to complete one application form in yet another attempt to ensure that we are making the process um, easier uh, for parents um, at a very busy time of their lives. Jenny Gilruth, <coughs> refilled by Elaine Smith. Thank you. Uh, given the DWP Sure Start Maternity Grant has one of the lowest rates of take-up of any benefit, will the Scottish Government commit to ensure the Best Start Grant is straightforward for claimants to access? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, indeed, I can testify to the, the fact that the, there is a very easy application process, having um, gone through the online application process um, recently um, with officials as part of our go live um, testing. Um, unlike the, um, the uh, payment that it's replacing, um, this benefit can be applied for online, uh, online in a very um, uh, simple um, form, but it can also be undertaken by phone as well as um, in a paper format. That includes, therefore, that we're encouraging um, a greater choice depending on the needs of the client. That put together with the items that I've already discussed um, in previous um, answers, well, I hope give uh, Jenny Gilruth reassurance that we are taking very seriously the challenge that the Sure Start Maternity Grant does, as you say, have one of the lowest rates of take up of any benefits, and that's not something we want to replicate in the slightest with the Best Start Grant. Elaine Smith to be followed by David Jones. Thank you, President Officer. Um, I welcome today's statement, and in particular the fact that this Best Start Grant very clearly opposes the despicable Tory child cap policy approach to Social Security. However, Given the cross-cutting nature of poverty, will the Cabinet Secretary encourage um, her government colleague, the Cabinet Secretary for Education, to consider changing the criteria for post-P3 free school meals to the same as the Best Start grant, so that it too applies to more families with children and not just those on the very lowest incomes? Cabinet Secretary. We, we started as a, a basis for the Best Start grant to ensure that those that were eligible for the Sure Start maternity grant were eligible for, for BSG and then look to see whether further changes uh, needed to be made for that. I do appreciate where Elaine Smith is coming from, that there are uh, different eligibility um, for, for different um, um, payments uh, with this regard, different uh, benefits are available to, to those uh, with young children. I'm also mindful to ensure that it's not necessarily a bad thing um, that there are different eligibility, because what I don't want to see is any cliff edge where people either 
uh, um, have the ability to apply for everything or they reach the point where they can apply for, for, for nothing. So I'm mindful of, of any um, cliff edges in terms of, of how we treat that. But I do take her point that these are uh, two um, distinct eligibility um, and we look very seriously, of course, at both our eligibility for Best Start Grant, as I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary for Education does uh, for free school meals. And David Torrance. <coughs> Thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm what plans the Government have in place for multi-birth families who face additional expense by having twins or triplets? Cabinet Secretary. Well, this is an area where we have specifically wanted to uh, address the uh, particular costs around a uh, multiple birth, and that's why we've introduced a multiple birth supplement of £300 in recognition of those additional costs. So if it is a twin birth, which the majority are, the payment made would be £600 for the first birth, £200 for the second birth, as well as the £300 multiple pregnancy supplement, given a total of £1,200 in financial report support. And I would stress again that we always recognise that subsequent children born um, within our payments, as there will never be a cap on children under Social Security Scotland. Thank you very much. And that concludes our statement on the implementation of the Best Start Grant. We'll move now on to the next item of business, which is a debate in the name of Kate Forbes on developing Scotland's digital industries for our economic future. We'll just take a few moments for the Cabinet Ministers and members to change seats.